Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back here to a Thursday, January 8th, 2026, 12, 13 p.m. California time here. Latest activity shows a 1.0 across California. Also 4.9 here. Uh, looks like around eastern Afghanistan area. New Zealand shaking here just about uh, 45 minutes or so ago. 5.0 earthquake. This originally coming in as a 5.4 uh, north of Wellington here, fairly deep underneath the area, 71 miles deep here for that five-pointer. Uh, now the depth there of that earthquake going to keep uh, the felt reports there fairly minimal, but it does look like a few folks reported filling uh, that earthquake out there in that circle region. Not a big earthquake, but it is one of the uh, more larger ones we've seen down here in New Zealand in uh, at least 30 days, probably the last couple months or so. Here's the last 30 days of activity in North Island, New Zealand, showing that five-pointer today. Also, a number of deep earthquakes there underneath North Island. That's more than likely associated here with the Hikarangi subduction zone. That's a significant area of mega quake concern, and uh, there's been quite a bit of time there uh, since the last big earthquake along that area. Also, you got the Alpine Fault down here south across the western side there of South Island. Keeping an eye, though, on North Island region, like I say, that five-pointer, definitely, definitely a, uh, a decent size event. New Zealand here. Oh, when was their last decent size earthquake here? Let's take a look real quick, see what we got here for uh, New Zealand. Pull up 5.0 and above, and we're just going to go back here uh, to about the year 2000. Take a little time travel event. 26 years ago is the year 2000. That's crazy. All right, so we're going to check this out real quick, see what we got here for New Zealand region. Just want to look at a little bit of historical data here. In the last 26 years, they've seen a number of decent size events, but obviously there's probably a lot here. Almost 1,000 earthquakes of 5.0 and above. Whoops, that's a lot. Um, let's see when our last decent one here was 7.8 and the 7.8 there, 2016, outside of Christchurch and a... Uh, 2009 7.8 a little bit further south here off the alpine fault uh, this region here is some prime for some big earthquake activity also of course the hikurangi subduction zone offshore there of north island seen a number of earthquakes out here looks like the uh oh there we go forgot to turn off my phone there that's my ebs ringtone <laughs> 6.2 uh, last year down across the south island area there's been a lot of larger events down here but uh, the Alpine Fault that runs north here is definitely on the uh, list for some larger activity. 6.7. There's a 6.2 in that same area as well. Uh, just kind of keep an eye on it, folks. Here's the five-pointer it stirred up there today um, at uh, 115 kilometers deep. which, uh, of course, is going to be a little bit uh, different number here for miles, 71 miles deep there. So keep an eye on things. You know, after all this movement happening uh, around the area, north and south of New Zealand region recently, it makes sense there to see areas fill in. Just like California here, you know, we're waiting for things to fill in across California. Uh, we had a little bit of activity this morning there into the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, a four-pointer stirring up here. Uh, this is uh, this, you know, a lot of people sharing that this is an earthquake swarm in the uh, volcanic field there of uh, Clear Lake. Well, this is a daily occurrence. These are geothermal plants out here, and there's a number of um, facilities that utilize uh, the heated area below to harvest energy. These are just some of the uh, geothermal plants out there. There's a whole process involved. Not going to go into that, uh, but you can check it out more if you want. Uh, but these are induced earthquakes um, because of the geothermal operations around these uh, facilities there. Sometimes these events can get a little bit larger. There's a 4.2 just after midnight, very close to one of the facilities there. Um, you know, I, I do think when things are pressurized out here or increasing in pressure across California, we do start to see... Uh, for whatever reason, further elevated larger events there across those geothermal fields. Because in the last 24 hours here, you know, we've had a, a decent amount of um, activity show up, mainly down in the Southern California, where we've seen some threes here outside the Ridgecrest area. 
and pull up 2.5 map and above and also one on the ridge or on the um, San Andreas fault here things have been kind of stirring up there's a couple of those earthquakes there near Ridgecrest we had two three pointers yesterday uh, 2.7 there on the San Andreas fault the southern segment the south branch that's not good because that's overdue here for an 8.1 uh, so it's been increasing out here in terms of the multitude counts and the magnitude starting to go up there as well. little line of activity across various faults here north of Los Angeles and the Los Angeles area. You can follow the thrust faults there that push pressure right up against the mountain ranges there. The general stress model here uh, has the North American and the Pacific Plate boundary. Uh, Pacific Plate moving off to the northwest here, putting some pressure on this area. And when these thrust faults light up like that, that's a good sign that things are increasing right up against the south branch of the San Andreas Fault. So do watch that. Bay Area of California, relatively quiet for now. A couple smaller events out and about. Uh, Northern California, they've got one earthquake here from yesterday. That's 16 miles deep into the Cascadia subduction zone. Not a, not a big event. But that did. Uh, that's a sign there of increasing pressure and stress up along and towards a locked area. The trimmer map from yesterday. Let me show you guys the slow slip event map here. We had uh, a little bit of elevated trimmer down there across Northern California. This is occurring about 35, 45 kilometers deep underneath this region. Uh, this earthquake occurred up above the trimmer level, um, which is a little bit further over here, but deeper underneath this area. So as we're seeing that trimmer count pick up a little bit we're seeing the stress signs show up there uh, up towards a more shallower area of the Cascadia subduction zone where the locked area consists and it's been locked and building up steam and pressure and stress uh, for 326 years and it's at any time here I do think we could see either a partial rupture of the southern end or a complete rupture resulting in a 9.0 or a greater quake there. there's a lot of stress that's been built up here in this area Washington and Oregon, uh, not a whole lot happening up there for now. Taking a look here at Yellowstone National Park Super Volcano. One earthquake from yesterday, but uh, just for verification, I, I want to go over here and double check the seismograph station. See what we got here today on this uh, Thursday. Uh, not a whole lot going on. This is current data as well, it looks like, I believe. 12.45, UTC time of almost 20 there. Yep, so we're right. That is uh, current and legit. A little earthquake on the uh, Philippines there. Not a whole lot of uh, earthquake activity there at Yellowstone. Uh, the rest of the country, some oil field operations. I've uh, seen some earthquakes out there. Also out around Louisiana. There's some oil fields out here as well. Red River, Bull Bayou, Bayou Oil and Gas Field. Three-pointers. Th two 3.1s this morning. Uh, the eastern, northeastern portion of the country. A couple of earthquakes there from yesterday. All right, let's take a look here at the world view of things right now. Um, aside from the activity stirring up there in New Zealand, some older, deeper activity up north. Still lacking activity here around Vanuatu northward about the Solomon Islands area. This has been kind of a seismic gap zone here for over, over 10 days. Uh, and normally it doesn't stay quiet like that for too long. So this could be an area of interest here in terms of building up and filling in here of uh, larger earthquake activity. Some movement around Papua New Guinea area right now. Indonesia region and uh, the uh, Java Trench just uh, that's pretty active, but uh, typical on any given day. Some movement there across Japan on the backside of Japan once again. 3.4 and a 3.3 north here off the northern uh, coast here of Japan. Keep an eye on that. There's some activity stirring up there, some larger activity out across, uh, looks like around eastern Afghanistan towards uh, Tajikistan, Tajikistan area, 5.3. Uh, a lot of mountain ranges up here, a lot of uh, pushing up of the uh, plates there, creating those mountains. Pretty decent uh, activity. Nothing big for now. 4.3 out in the uh, China area, it looks like. Uh, off the coast there, Morocco, is that, uh, let me see what we got. North here of Morocco into the strait, a little four-pointer this morning as well. Fairly active globally. Definitely got, uh, you know, some decent movement out here. 
multitude counts are rather high uh, for a daily count. Uh, the largest event out here in the last 24 hours goes to uh, goes to that was that right 5.5 down there in Ecuador. That's from last night. So far today uh, goes to that 5.3 out there out there in those mountains. But uh, definitely noticeable, pretty noticeable uptick here across the area. Keep an eye on New Zealand. It's got, you know, big quake potential out there. It rides on a plate boundary, so it's going to see some large quake activity here soon. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, number of quakes out there. Uh, nothing big for now. It's uh, uh, that typical swarm underneath the Pahala area. We do have a couple earthquakes up around Mauna Loa that are fairly deep as well. You remember, you know, in the last couple months or so, we've seen a huge increase in earthquake activity out here across the area. A lot going on underneath this region that could have some effects here going forward to the volcanoes. It takes a little while, right? It may even take months to see what is going on and uh, what we'll see up towards the surface area as far as an increase in volcanic activity, whether it's uh, around Mauna Loa or the Kilauea volcano. Definitely a lot of deeper activity, more so uh, in the last year than in the last couple months than what we've seen here in the last year. So things are happening underneath that area. As uh, far as the Kilauea volcano goes, let's take a look here at the deformation data. We should be getting close here to another eruption. I said roughly around the uh, 10th or so. I uh, got a couple more days before that happens. We had a little bit of leveling out, so that. Uh, uh, extended that time frame a little bit. Here's the last eruption back on the 23rd, 24th of December. We're just uh, a little short of the inflation uh, chart here in terms of previous eruptions, but uh, we're getting close. So I say I'm probably picking around the 10th or so for an eruption time period. As uh, far as space weather activity goes, here's that coronal hole. Not really impressed with it, folks. It's a little weak very thin northward pointing coronal hole. I mean, yes, it's got some large coverage area in terms of length, but you know, if this thing filled in, like if this was a massive coronal hole, oh man, <laughs> everyone would be talking about it. But there's some that like to pick this out saying, oh, look at this, it's gonna be a major event. No, it's not. This is just a very thin uh, area of um, solar wind stream that's shooting out, not even directly facing the planet. In fact, they've removed a lot of the uh, storming potential here uh, as far as aurora activity goes in the next couple days. We did have a little sea flare activity. Uh, it looks like there on the chart, um, not anything spectacular. Um, I'm betting it's coming off of 43, uh, 34 here. This is uh, flaring a little bit. You can see that sunspot right there, magnetic lines looping up and about. Uh, 4334, it's going to be this region. Let's take a look here, see what we got today. Uh, it doesn't look like much here, uh, but it is trying to flare. I don't think we're going to see anything major out of that. Uh, the main area of concern, I think, is going to be back over here. This area is starting to grow, it's starting to get a couple more independent or more uh, um, complex structures here within the center portion of that sunspot. So that's going to be definitely an area to watch here in the coming days. That's uh, 4336 out there. Does have a uh, beta gamma delta structure. Stable, but I'm looking at the complexity model there, and it does look like it's grown overnight. So that's going to be an area uh, maybe for some concern here for flaring activity. Uh, I'm still leaving my flare threat at about 1% chance there for X flare. M flare about 45 to 50% chance. So I have to bump mine up a little bit in that department. Uh, and again, the aurora activity, if anything does come about that, that thin little coronal hole, uh, we may see up around a G1 class storm. And that's if the, um, the uh, BTBZ component here cooperates. And right now it's fairly open. Uh, we are seeing speed increase a little bit, uh, so we'll see what happens here, but not really expecting any spectacular huge solar storm. As uh, far as any close approach asteroids go to the planet, well, this one's underneath half a million miles, 35 foot. That was just discovered this year. They're always discovering ones um, every day. This is coming in uh, on January 10th. Everything else is millions of miles away, so fairly safe there for the uh, meantime. 
time being there. Uh, severe weather tomorrow, potentially there across portions of the south. We do have a 5% chance there of tornado activity across uh, some highly populated regions, such as New Orleans. Also a 2% extending out and about from that. Some wind damage and a little bit of hail threat here. This is going to be for Friday, so just a heads up. Already seen some uh, tornado potential or tornado activity down there in Oklahoma uh, this morning. Got uh, two reports of tornado activity so far today. Wind reports up around 13. Even some wind damage outside of Augusta up there uh, in Kansas. Uh, 82 mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, so the severe weather is coming and it's working its way east there for Friday into Saturday. So just a heads up. California, we got some sunshine, but we got the dreaded north wind out here blowing things around. But uh, the sunshine definitely helped things dry out and uh, grow well, as far as the greenery goes out here. And it looks dry. An extended period of dry weather here. I'm very thankful that we've already received sufficient, you know, at least a decent amount of rain here in the last three weeks. I picked up 10 inches of rain at my place here north of Sacramento outside of Chico in the last three weeks that's a lot but that's only like half of what we should get in the winter time we still have february and march but if we don't get any more storms out here for the rest of the winter well that's not good hopefully february and march there will be wet for us because we don't need massive dominant high pressure ridging out here which it looks like it will stick in there for uh, a good portion of january I mean, I was looking at these Climate Prediction Center models, and it uh, looks quite dry out here for the 8 to 14 day forecast. Well below average. Not good. Above average for temperatures as well. And that's for long term and short term. Short term is crazy. Well above average temperature and well below precipitation outlook. All right. I'm going to jump off here, folks, and. Uh, uh, get some lunch going on. A little earthquake there on Barrett. That's in Southern California. Keep an eye on New Zealand. Starting to move a little bit. Uh, let's see if there's any aftershock. No aftershock activity yet. But then again, have to go over here to the uh, the GeoNet servers here. The folks at Monitor New Zealand earthquake activity, they're actually reporting that still as a 5.4. So, you know, take your pick. One's covering local. One's covering worldwide activity. Uh, you know, who's who's right? Who's wrong? It was 4.3 three days ago down there as well. Um, let's see if there's any aftershock activity. I really don't see any aftershock activity specifically in that area. Just a couple smaller quakes there off the uh, eastern side there of North Island. There's that 5.4 again as well. It uh, definitely was felt out there. Look at that. 14,000 reports there around North, even South Island reporting that 5-pointer. Someone out in the ocean reported something it looks like. A big event? I doubt it. Probably a, a, an error. All right, folks, have a good one. We'll see you guys out here for uh, the Thursday night update unless something major happens. Uh, quick update on Chomper. Blood work came back fine yesterday. X-rays show that things are um, there's still some blockage going on. I want to avoid surgery if possible. He's able to go to the bathroom. He's eating and drinking. Uh, the infection's going away. His kidneys are doing better. But man, putting him, you know, in a very difficult situation there where, sur where surgery, you know, it, it it can be risky down there because there's a lot of blood vessels, there's a lot of nerves, there's, you know, it's a lot of potential wrongdoings if things don't play out right. So I want to try first the route that I'm going and it's working right now and I hope it stays that way. All right, we'll see you guys out here tonight for the uh, Thursday night update. Take care, folks.